Hi folks, this is Tony at Travel Scoot again. Today we're going to discuss general maintenance on the Travel Scoot mobility scooter. I want to start off by pointing out a couple of lubricants that are pretty suitable for every lubrication task on the Travel Scoot. Uh, let's start with the tried and true WD-40. This is primarily a penetrant and water repellent and a solvent. It's not as good a lubricant, but every household's got it. Well, pretty much every household, you can use it for wiping the scooter down, lubricating points. Uh, there are fine lubricants out there that WD-40 puts out, such as this long-term corrosion inhibitor. It works great. This is really actually preferred. This is a silicone spray, it's particularly water resistant. This is another silicone spray, another manufacturer. You can find all these things at the local hardware store. This is a multi-purpose lubricant. And the one thing all of these lubricants have in common is that none of them are heavy, greasy, oily lubricants. Um, greases, motor oil, heavier oils, and things like that attract dirt and grit, and that defeats the purpose of lubricating stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, start by showing you a few of the lubrication points on the scooter. The steering column can use a little lube from time to time, not a ton of it, but just give it a squirt down there all the way around and exercise it back and forth. That's not a bad idea. Then might as well use the WD-40 as a pointer. It's a nice red pokey thing called a straw. Lubricating the locking pins from time to time is a good idea. Not only to lubricate them, but also to rinse out any grit and grime that might be in there. So you want to douse them pretty liberally. Uh, throw a towel underneath your scooter or do it outside or something like that. Um, you can also lubricate the actual hinge bolt in here. There are two brass sections in here uh, that do actually provide or don't require lubrication, but it doesn't hurt to get that stuff in there. Helps rinse out some of the road dirt and so forth that you pick up. Other than that, there's not much else to lubricate. We do suggest from time to time lubricating this area of your lever clamps. They're located, uh, depending on your model of scooter, either on the right side or both sides of the yoke. The seat, of course, you're familiar with, and then the steering column. Getting a little lubricant in there from time to time doesn't hurt, makes uh, things operate a little smoother, and again, removes dirt and other deposits you might pick up over time. The one can I didn't address earlier was uh, this right here. This is not a lubricant. This is an electronic contact spray. Um, it's just a little harder to find. Not everybody has it in great variety, but uh, you can get it at uh, auto parts stores. Uh, good hardware stores will carry it. I think I actually got this at Home Depot, for example. There are just a couple brands. You want to make sure that it's a, a quick drying formula. They're meant to clean electrical contacts, remove corrosion, oxidation, sulfidation, stuff like that, and dry residue free. The points on the scooter that uh, can use a little dousing of that from time to time are your battery connector, your battery receptacle in there as well, and then Kevin, uh, you probably want to spin around and I'll show the junction box again if necessary. Uh, okay, I guess it's necessary. Push forward on your little latch, off it goes, have somebody chase it down before the dog runs off with it, and then you want to just... Uh, Apply the spray liberally to your two uh, connectors, your on-off, forward-reverse connector, and your throttle connector. Uh, you, while you're down here, you might as well check out to make sure that they are secure, that none of the wires are damaged, and that the wires themselves are firmly inserted into their plastic uh, connectors. I'll just hold that in place. Apply after applying your contact cleaner. Hook your junction box cover back in place and snap her back in and you are good to go. So much for cleaning and lubrication. After that, uh, we just want to briefly discuss uh, adjusting the brakes. We go into this in some more detail in uh, our brake adjustment video, but your adjusting points here in short are your adjusting nipples on the brake levers themselves. You've got similar nipples down at the face of the fork, left and right, so one for each brake. And then of course, you've got your course adjustment at the brake band itself. That's so much for the brakes. Um, you might want to pan back in on the brakes for a second. Uh, we can discuss taking a look at the brakes for wear and tear. Uh, these, of course, are new. This is what new brakes look like. They begin to wear uh, a little bit rapidly at first, but then once they're broken and they uh, wear very evenly and slowly, um, this green portion here is the friction lining. That's actually a wear lining. If you see this getting close to the metal, let's say close to the outer metal band, then it may be time to replace the brake bands. They're inexpensive and readily available through Travel Scoot USA. Just give us a call. 
As far as tightening things on the travel scoot go, you may want to check your rigid clamps for tightness. That's fairly important. This is what keeps your handlebars and your front wheel in alignment. And then the other rigid clamp at the base of the seat. While I've got the seat off, let me just point out uh, one thing that does need to be checked for tightness, uh, say a little more frequently, and that would be the seat screws. Uh, the seat itself is made of a plywood plate with uh, threaded inserts in it, and over time these nuts will compress, or rather these screws will compress the plywood, so they will become a little bit loose. Check them from time to time. They actually do fall out if they go unchecked for a longer period. Of course you want to check your axle nuts from time to time. It's done simply enough with the Allen wrenches that came with your toolkit. One very important item to inspect from time to time is this axle nut on the left hand side, in other words the motor side. This requires a 17 or uh, 3 quarter inch wrench uh, or 19 millimeter and you want to make sure this is absolutely as tight as you can get it. Uh, if this nut loosens over time it can damage your frame uh, if the motor is allowed to joggle or toggle back and forth repeatedly. It'll actually wear out the slot in the fork, uh, thereby requiring a frame replacement. Other than that, you want to check your hinge bolts for tightness. You want to make sure they're not so loose that they're, you know, almost falling out, uh, but they shouldn't be so tight that there uh, is strong resistance to folding and unfolding the scooter. Similarly, with the locking pins, you just want to make sure that the retention bolt for the spring, that's all that, uh, that bolt here uh, does, uh, is in there and not uh, ready to fall out. An area that gets overlooked frequently uh, and that can be the cause of a squeaky seat assembly is the yoke and the plastic yoke bushings on the scooter. Uh, they tend to accumulate all sorts of nasty road grime and stuff like that and really need to be cleaned from time to time. It's simple enough to do. Uh, if you can't remove all the all the schmutz and so forth with just a regular uh, rag and soap and water, you can use a scotch pad. This is a uh, straight scotch pad that you can get at uh, most hardware stores. You can also use a scotch, uh, scotch bright kitchen sponge and you want to clean the outside of the yoke but not too abrasively. It shouldn't need too much scrubbing, hopefully and then the inside of the plastic bushings, which you can be a little rougher with, they are plastic. Um, ideally, you get them both clean and completely dry. If they do stick a little bit, uh, if the yoke has a tendency to, to stick in the uh, bushings, it's okay to apply a little bit of the silicone lubricant, not too much otherwise, uh, it's gonna decrease the clamping force to where you really have to tighten the clamps. Beyond that, you know, cleanliness is about the single most important issue on the travel scoot, uh, if you do, have to ride it in inclement conditions. Make sure it's, uh, it gets a chance to get cleaned up and dried off afterwards. Don't put it away wet and uh, forget about it. If moisture is allowed to penetrate or sit in uh, little niches and stuff like that, it will set up corrosion and it could cause trouble later on. Um, so just treat your travel scoot nicely and it'll treat you very well as well. If you have any other maintenance topics that you'd like discussed, uh, please let us know and we will shoot a video and post it on our travel scoot channel at, on YouTube at Travel Scoot USA. Thanks for watching. Happy scooting.